Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Show Bisbam, a showcase of some of the talented students and a few ex-students from Bisbam High. What's the matter with you? That would make more sense. What would? Show Bisbam. I thought it was Show Biz Ham. And it was either something about a talented pig or a very bad actor. That didn't make, make very much sense at all. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This here is Callum, and I'm Daniel, and we will be your host for this evening. Will we? I wondered what we were doing here. Oh dear. Let's introduce the first item, shall we? First of all are the Showstoppers. The Showstoppers are a dynamic dance group consisting of Bisbam High School's Year 7 and 8 students. They've put a modern twist on an old classic, Fane, and showed the true essence of hard work, stamina, and passion for dance. All students, as well as Mrs. Moore and Miss Eccles, hope you sit back and enjoy watching the talented Showstoppers. Now remember what I told you, and it'll all work out fine, especially the part involving the boxing glove. But that's got nothing to do with hosting a variety show. I know, but it gives you what, an idea about what will happen if you mess it up. I know. All I need is something to sink my teeth into. By sheer coincidence, this sketch is a parody, parody of the Twilight series. It is written and performed by Emily Heppenstall, and she's joined by Lewis Johnson. This was a double act that was formed for last year's Variety Vortex and their John and Mary sketch was developed for Blackpool School's Alive Festival at the Grand Theatre. The story shows the troubled relationship between a brother and a sister as one fights for vampirism. Emily hopes you enjoy it.
Why did you bring me here? It's a field. You wanted a holiday. So you brought me to a field? <sighs> well, I thought you'd be at home with all the cows. <laughs> you brought me to a field in a storm to insult me. You could have done that well enough at home, little brother. Ugh. Well, this way you can't break the TV. I'm one of your little tantrums. Tantrums? I do not have tantrums! You shout and break things. That counts as a tantrum. You know, I may not be able to break the TV from here, but I can break your beloved car. With what? How about your skull? No wonder you're called Lucifer. What did you say? I said, no wonder you're called Lucifer. Well, at least I'm not called Vladimir. I mean, that just says it all, doesn't it? And what's that supposed to mean? Your vampiric heart, that's what it means. You drain the life out of me with your bitterness. You're like a high school bully, sucking away everything good and leaving behind a heart of ice. We're supposed to be family, but you don't even know the meaning of the word. Trust me, your heart was ice for an eternity before it uttered a single word of harm. And that's all your own doing. There's the devil in you, Lou, and no mistake, you can't escape it, you know, no matter how hard you try. I'm sorry, Lou. I've known you all my life. I've never seen you do a single thing of kindness for another living soul. I feel dead inside. You've been alone all your life except for me. And you've hardly lived. But I suppose, if you had, things would have been different. You would have been different. We both would. You might have been a good sister. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, come on. I was only joking. Sort of. Oh, I'm sick of this. Of you. She never really thinks about the consequences of her actions. She just goes ahead and follows her emotions, usually anger. It leads to disasters and tearful departures, but most of all, it leads to us becoming separated further and further apart from each other. It feels like we're becoming less like family and more like mortal enemies. I know things started just coming strange between us. It's my relationship with her only friend, Verona. But when Verona died in a tragic accident six months after we began our relationship, Lucy began to deteriorate. She's, she's been dead inside since that day. And it's just easy to pretend that she's well, always been that way. God, you're so two-faced now. Yes, you do know it's only acting, don't you? Acting? Give me strength. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? Bethany Markham is tonight entertaining you with the Duffy song, Warwick Avenue. Bethany is studying GCSE music and is part of a school gospel choir and marmosettes. And came third in Blackpool School's pop idol competition this year singing this very song.
Time for a sketch now. Oh dear, I didn't bring any paper or a pencil. I'm sure if you had, it would be sharper than you. Not that sort of sketch. Look at your script, will you? Chloe Adshead, Jade Riley and Natasha Munday and Claire Taylor are performing various comedy sketches tonight. The first is called Doctor Doctor. Just think about every Doctor Doctor joke you've ever heard. Put them together and you may well end up with a sketch that goes something like this. Spots in front of my eyes. Have you seen a doctor? No, just spots. Doctor, brought my son into ours because he swallowed a coin. What's his status? No change yet. <laughs> doctor, I've got insomnia. Don't lose any sleep over it. Doctor, I've been having weird dreams that I'm invisible. I can't see you now. Come back tomorrow. Doctor, I feel like killing myself and I need your help. What should I do? Pay in advance. Doctor, I think I'm shrinking. Well, you'll just have to be a little patient. Doctor, everyone keeps ignoring me. Next. Doctor, I feel awful again. What's wrong with me? Oh, you've had this before? Yes. Well, you've got it again. <laughs> My friend's doctor told me he had appendicitis, and two weeks later, he died of heart failure. Don't worry. If I tell you you've got appendicitis, you'll die from appendicitis. Doctor, I need this wrist and air removed from my foot. How long will it take and how much will it cost? About five minutes and 300 pounds. 300 pounds? Five minutes of work? You having a giraffe? I can do it slow if you like. Doctor, what's wrong? You look puzzled. I can't figure out what's wrong with you. I think it's a result of heavy drinking. <laughs> OK, I'll come back when you're sober. Doctor, doctor. Do you know what? I've had enough of your doctor, doctor. Listen, right? Call one, one, one. OK. <laughs>
health service must be in a worse state than I thought. That was a series of jokes, not a documentary. Oh, I'm not sure I understand. I think I do. Did any of those dogs have a straight jacket I could borrow? Oh well, it was worth a try. What's the guitar for? You'll see. The next act is an acoustic version of Bon Jovi's rock classic, Living on a Prayer. The song tells the story of Gina and Tommy, who work hard and save money to one day gain better lives for each other. They love each other, chase their dreams and stick together through good times and bad. Our narrators, Charlotte, Lorna and Alice, tell the story while Jade and Ruben take on the characters of Gina and Tommy. Whoa, living on a prayer, whoa. 
Anybody know where they're going? What do you mean? They kept saying they were halfway there, but nobody said where they were actually going. <laughs> you live on a different planet to the rest of us, don't you? Do I? Perhaps that's it. Perhaps I'm an alien. <laughs> nah, you're just an idiot. Okay. <laughs> The comedic talents of our four actors are here to entertain you once again with a parody of reality TV show auditions. It's not always the judges who are the divas at the audition process, as this sketch will show. How was your weekend? Yeah, it was good. I went to uh, Barbados. <laughs> sure isn't Botox. <laughs> anyway, in a fight you, let's talk about my new play. Our new play. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, a Hollywood blockbuster in the making. Called insert title here. Yeah. I mean, we're working on it. We've only got 30 quid in the budget so far. Nearly there. Yeah, it'll be fine. So, auditions when you are ready. When you're ready? Just uh, I think so. Sorry, I'm sorry, no, 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 that was you. That was you. Move on. Okay, I think you've wasted enough of our time. Can you please carry on now? Ma, 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 ma. What are you doing? Joining in. No, this is our vocal exercise. That's for singing. What? This isn't a musical? <laughs> this isn't Les Mis? <laughs> no. No. This is low budget. Can't Bet you've only got 20 quid. Moving on, please. Give me money. No. Give me money. No. She didn't take it. Oh my uh. gosh, she's dead. <laughs> you called that acting. That was pathetic. <laughs> Give me something I'm feeling. I want to see something sad. Give me money. No. Give me money. No. Oh, she didn't take it. Oh my gosh, she's <laughs> dead. Oh my god, what have I done? Dead people don't cry for one thing. They, they do, do now. now. I just. Speed it up a little bit, all right? Give me money. No. Give me money. No. I'm take my ah. dead. <laughs> we'll slow down, okay? Take this seriously. Right. Give me your money. No. Give me your money. <laughs> no. I'll shoot you and take it. She's dead. <laughs> this is not Finding Nemo. You will never be Dory. So just, no. That was too slow. <laughs> Can you please depress now? Give me something funny. Right. <laughs> Give me the money. No. Give me the money. No. Oh, she's dead. Oh, my God, she's dead. <laughs> Get out. You've ruined it for everyone. Just leave. You know what? Some people can't take good thespians properly. We are. <laughs> My guns ran out. We're out of here. They want to do it anyway. It's rubbish. You know what? See, monkeys are better than you. I auditioned for this show, you know. Did you get the part? <laughs> Do you listen to yourself at all? What was your audition like then? Oh, I didn't audition. I was just looking for the toilets, took a wrong turn, and before I knew what was happening, I was given this script and shoved through a curtain. That would explain a lot. Would you care to look at the script now? The BTEC Performing Arts course at Bisman High School gives students the opportunity to act through dra da drama dance and music disciplines. Learn as a part of a performing arts company, which is important on the course due to the vocational nature of the BTEC. This year, students have named their company Blackout and have researched 
school-based musicals. They're performing an excerpt from the musical Footloose. In this musical, adults in the town ban the teenagers from dancing. In the scene, the main character, Ren, argues with the powers that be to help the teenagers of the town fight their cause to keep their passion for dance. <laughs> an official meeting, we will not tolerate any disturbances. The floor is now open for any new business. I'm Ren McCormack. I'd like to move on behalf of most of the senior class that the law against public dancing within the town limit be abolished. <laughs> Mr Chairman, could I address myself to this? <laughs> you bet. Even if this was not a law, which it is, I'm afraid I'd have a lot of difficulty endorsing an enterprise with such general thought and peril as I believe this one to be. Besides the liquor and the drugs which always seem to accompany such an event, the thing that distresses me most, Ren, is the spiritual corruption, and I think you'll find most of the community agree with me on this one. I agree. That's all I have to say on this. A vote is in order with the motion. All those opposed? I would just like to say something if I could. I just wanted to say a few words about this motion so that you wouldn't think we were encouraging any destruction with this, with this idea from the oldest of times. People dance for a number of reasons. They danced in prayer or so that their crops would be plentiful or their hunt would be good. And they danced to stay physically fit and show their community spirit. They danced to celebrate. And that is the dancing we are talking about. Aren't we told in Psalm 149, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song. Let them praise his name in the dance. Amen. Um, it was his own followers. And it was King David, King David who we read about in Samuel. And what did David do? What did David do? What did David do? David danced before the Lord with all his might, leaping and dancing before the Lord, leaping and dancing. Ecclesiastes assured us there is a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to laugh, a time to weep, a time to mourn, and there is a time to dance. There was a time for this law, but not anymore. See, this is our time to dance. This is our way of celebrating life. This is how it was in the beginning. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it should be now.
What's the matter now? I think they should go to A&E. <laughs> Sorry? They've got loose feet. You should see a doctor, surely. <laughs> You're having me on, aren't you? After we've introduced the next item, I think you ought to go have a lie down. Now, here's a sketch looking back on the Victorian England obsession with circus freak shows. Are you brave enough to look upon this sight? Is beauty only skin deep? Be afraid. Be very afraid. Gather round, step right up, come to the face of the ugliest man in the world. Are you brave enough? You! You look brave. One, one pound. Best money you ever spend. Can't be that bad. No. But before you go, any <laughs> heart failure, fainting, death, not our fault. Can you just tell me just after I've just paid? I'd be fine. I'll be over here. I hope so. <laughs> they were brave, but I don't think I have the stomach for it. But you, you, yes, you, right here. Come on. Come, it's fine. What for? For the Face okay, the man in the world, man pound. You sure it's not him? Contender. But no. It's right there. It's right there. It's cool. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Another fainter. Hello, how are you? Come right here. Right here. Come on, face okay, man in the world. Be fine. One pound. What's it going towards? Insurance. For what? Always good to be in charge. Just go. This one? Right there. What if I'm sick? You won't be sick. It's fine. Better not be. Just go. Ah! <laughs> ah! Comes to the face of the ugliest woman in the world. You'll be glad to know I've given him the slip so I can introduce something sensibly for once. A couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, for our first ride show, Mr. Moore, the bald-headed bloke usually stuck behind a mixing desk, formed an a cappella group with nine members of the gospel choir. Since then, the group has grown to 12 regular members with Miss Baygott and Mr. Oldham. The girls love singing in the group, and even though most of them have gone on to college, they continue to perform with the group. This show marks the last time for a while that Emily Hopkins will be with the group as she starts university soon singing a song first made famous by the Cordettes, and more recently in an advert for Computers Hair, taking us into our interval are the Marmosettes. Lollipop, lollipop, oh lolly, 
guest for this next number. Uh, unfortunately, there are two bass parts in it, and as I can't cut myself in two, I need a hand. Come on, Mr. Oldham. Spot the person who hasn't learnt the music. <laughs> Insulting. Alice! I should mention, actually, that this next number is called Short People.
think I might have upset her. <laughs> oh. Have you noticed she's now wearing high heels, but she's still the smallest person in the choir? <laughs> right. I should actually mention that tonight is the very last performance for a while, at least, of Emily here, who is uh, leaving for university. And we've sort of been a bit fluid about this last number as we've gone through the night. So we've actually, this is a different third night, third different number. <laughs> this one is a special request of Emily because it's her favourite one. And it perhaps goes some way to explain why we're called the Marmosettes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you'll notice, the screen has come down, which means it's time for a surprise addition to this evening's performance. It has become a tradition over the last few years to include a film made by some of the school staff, and unfortunately, this year has been no exception. Imagine, if you will, that one of the most famous ever film musicals was made for a budget of £3.50.
back everyone to a new term. Just one small announcement. Would students please refrain from standing on the picnic tables? It's not very hygienic. Why this car is automatic, it's systematic, it's high dramatic, why it's grease lightning, who gets some overhead lifters and four barrel quads, oh yeah, keep talking, whoa, keep talking, fuel injection cutoffs and chrome plated rods, oh yeah, I'll get her ready, I'll come to get her ready, with the four speed on the floor, they'll be waiting at the door, I don't think that pop fits, can I have another bit? Grease lightning, go grease lightning, you're burning up the quarter mile. Go grease lightning, you're coasting through that heat like trial. You are supreme, the chicks are scream for grease lightning. Supreme, the chicks will scream, the grease and lightning, 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 lightning. What students please note that wigs are not official school uniform and that goes for the staff too. Your story is sad to tell A teenage ne'er-do-well 
most mixed up, non delinquent on the block. Your future's so unclear now. What's left of your career now? Can't even get a train on your smile Beauty school dropout No graduation day for you Beauty school dropout your midterms and flung shampoo Well at least you could have taken time To wash and clean your clothes up After spending all that gold To have the doctor fix your nose up Baby don't blow it Don't put my good advice to shame train currently parked in the main car park, please report to reception. You've left the headlights on. Sandy, tell me about it, stud.
time for today's drill. But for a change, let's dance. You'll be glad to know that for reasons of taste, sanity and the threat of legal action from Paramount Pictures, the planned sequel, Greasy 2, Revenge of the Broil Cream, has had to be cancelled. I thought it was better than the original. You would. Can we get on with this? Getting the hang of this, finally, it's only taking you half a show. I would now like to present to you this from's gifted and talented dance company, Dynamite High Flyers. The group formed in September and have been working extremely hard all year doing contemporary technique and creating dance performance work. The dancers are a combination of very talented Bisman students who were selected and graduate students from the Royal Ballet School Primary Steps Program that's based here at Bisman High School. The Rumble is a contemporary dance piece based around two rival street gangs. Inspiration in some of the music for the piece has been taken for the musical Waves, right? West Side Story, where two teenage gangs, the Dietz and the Sharks, struggle for control of the neighborhood amidst police and whistles and taunts. The gang fights get out of control and one of the gangs ends up getting killed. <laughs> Gradually, all the members of both gangs assemble on either side of the body, showing the feud is over. We hope you enjoy our version of the story.
Rumble? That reminds me, I haven't eaten, uh, eaten all day. I don't think that was quite what it meant. I know, I just meant... Oh, never mind. The musical Wicked has become increasingly popular since its debut in 2003. It is the untold story of Elphaber and Glinda, the witches from Oz. The plot proceeds a classic tale, The Wizard of Oz. The song For Good tells of a friendship in hard times between the good witch and the bad witch, highlighting their loyalty to one another in a way that we never see in The Wizard of Oz.
It's often been said that a reporter would go to any lengths to get a story. This is a short sketch about the lengths an unsuccessful journalist will go to to achieve the scoop of their career. and I have been for 12 years now but in all that time I've never had a real story I mean I've written things sure some guy fell off his bike and a cat got stuck up a tree but let's face it it's nothing interesting and no one wants to hear about that stuff why be a reporter if no one wants to hear the things you go into report there's just no point so now I'm gonna jump off this bridge and end it all because no one's going to stop me. One, two... Stop! What are you doing? Ending it all. Ending what? Everything. I'm a failed reporter. You think that's bad? Yeah. Right. I'm a high school teacher, also an alcoholic. <laughs> and I have just realised how much I hate those hormonal teenagers. So, gonna mm. join you. Oh, it's nice. Ready? One, One, two, two. Stop! What are you doing? Ending it all. What? Life. Why? I hate my job. I hate my job. <laughs> you think that's bad. I am a florist and I hate stinking flowers. And I live my life with funerals with flowers, so I think I'll join you. Oh, okay. okay. One, two, stop! <laughs> Do you What's with the mind? stick? What are you doing? Ending it. Ending what? Life. Why? I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job, no one's there. <laughs> I hate my job. Why? <laughs> I'm a park ranger. I thought you were Gandalf. <laughs> you should need your beard now. I'm a park ranger and I hate camping. I hate it when people let their dogs off the lead and they do a poo poo or wee wee on my grass grass. I didn't want any decoration. Also, I hate the wildlife. Squirrels? Right, drive can we me just up. jump now? Yeah. Okay. But wait, wait. So, do you want to commit suicide? Yeah. Yep. One, two, three. <laughs> ha! Three jumps to their grisly deaths and suicide pact. <laughs> what a scoop. <laughs> the integrity of the journalist. Ever truthful, always doing what's best, reporting on what really matters, not. Thank you, Lord Levinson. Are you gonna bring that mic stand over here so we can get set up for the next act? Okay. Kale is studying on the BTEC music course as a guitarist and singer. His dream is to become a recording artist. It's the one thing he works incredibly hard at because he has an unbelievable passion for music. Kale looks for every opportunity to perform. Tonight, he'll be singing a classic Eric Clapton track.
once I lived the life of a billionaire Spent all my money without any care Took all my friends for a mighty good time Bought bootleg liquor, champagne and wine Then I began to fall so low Lost all my good friends, had nowhere to go I get my hands on a dollar again I'll hang on to it till I leave As you can see, I've managed, managed to give Calm slip once more. Actually, I've just locked him out on the fire escape, and it's a bit dra drafty out there. Listen. <laughs> the two Ronnies were a famous comedy duo that entertained audiences throughout the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. They are held in high esteem by comedians and audiences alike. Today, their sketches are still hilarious and testament to a comedy, comedy genius that are Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett. This sketch is called Crossword. Have you ever been sat on a train, in a hairdresser's, on a bus, etc., and someone really annoying that does something that's, well, really annoying, like slurping tea, picking the nose, tapping the nails, or guessing the wrong answers to a crossword out loud? Sixteen across. It's green, it's often found on football pitches. Five letters. G R A something something. It's green. It's often found on football pitches. G R A something something. Grandstand. No, that's too long, no. G R A. Something, something. Grass. Pardon? Grass. A child of five could see it's grass. Well, excuse me, who's doing this crossword? Me or you? Well, you kindly keep your voice down. Some of us are trying to do proper crosswords here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Proper crosswords? What do you mean by that? I am trying to do the Metastopheles in the Financial Times. A crossword which you wouldn't even know where to start. As it happens... I could do any crossword you put in front of me, including the Mesodophilos leaves. It just so happens that I prefer the sun, junior, coffee time, easy clues. That's all, it's just a matter of taste. The sun. People only buy that for one thing. For a couple of things. Two across. There you go, see what I mean? They pet holes. 
in your milk bottle tops. Four letters, something something T S. That's a typical sun glue, that is. Pack holes in your milk bottle tops. Something T S. Bats. Bats. When did you last see a bat? Peck a hole in the milk bottle top. Well, it might do if it was hungry. See, you're the one that's bats. If you want the answer to that question, I suggest you look at page three. Now, would you please desist as I am attempting to concentrate? Red smells, and it's often picked in the garden. Four letters, something O S E. Ooh. Well, that's not right. Pardon? It's rose. Rose, it's obvious. It's red, it smells, and it's often picked in the garden. Rose. It could be nose. Look, look. I've never seen anything like this crossword. You've got it absolutely wrong. I mean, look at what you've got here. Place where fish are kept. You've got coop. I mean, when did you, when did you last hear of a fish being kept in a coop? Co-op, isn't it? Fish are kept in a co-op. And what about this one here? Strange animal found in a hive. You've got queer bee. Well? It's queen. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Not down my road, it's not, anyway. And I mean, look, look. It has to be queen because of the end. You see, it goes down with the clue that goes down, you see. He always plays with big ears. Roddy? Roddy, it's Noddy, you fool. It's Roddy in Toyland. It's Noddy in Toyland. Roddy in Toyland, big ears and PC Plop. PC Plod, don't you know anything? It's Roddy in Toyland. It's Noddy in Toyland. Roddy. Noddy. Roddy. Look, he's called Noddy because he has a hat with a bell on the end. And when he nods his head, it rings and he goes, hello, I'm little Noddy. I'm little Noddy, hello. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it's this man here. He's driving me mad. Well, I've only got one clue left. Oh, good. He's got one clue left. Do you think, do you think if we uh, help him with this last clue, clue he might shut up? Uh, let's ask him. If we help you with this last clue, will you shut up? I promise. Go on, then. Six across, four letters, often found in the bottom of a bird cage. Something, something, I-T. Grit. Excellent. Grit, of course. Has anybody got a rubber? Crosswords. I better get a few from Callum when he finally gets back through that fire door. I've piled loads of stuff against the door now, too. Oh, heck, he's getting back through. I'd better be quick. The next two students have now left school after their GCSE exams. They wanted to come back and perform for you tonight. They've completed two successful years following the BTEC Performing Arts course. Phantom of the Opera is a popular Andrew Lloyd Webber musical that tells the story of the Phantom and how he entices Christine into his spell.
I am your angel of music. Who are you? Flattering child, you shall know me. See why in shadow I hide. Look at your face in the mirror. I am there inside. Angel of music, hide no longer. Come to me, strange angel. I am your angel of music. Come to me, angel of music.
don't know about phantoms, but someone has been keeping me away from this stage. I wonder who that could be. Yeah, I wonder. Our last sketch explores that beautiful relationship between a mother and a child. How often have you heard a relative's family and friends say, the newborn baby has his dad's eyes, his mum's nose, his grandmother's hair. Poor thing doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> seen in my life. Oh, I feel sick. Oh, how dare you say that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh look, I'm sorry mum, but just look at it. It's both little eyes and it's, oh, that is a face only a mother could love. Oh, you beast! Conductor, conductor, come here! Yes ma'am, what seems to be problem? This man is being very insulting and saying terrible and nasty things. Ma'am, uh, yeah ma'am, would you please go to the car? And don't bother this man, woman again. Look, I'm sorry, but that thing's ugly. There you go, ma'am. He won't bother you again. She? She won't bother you again. Well, I certainly hope not. This has been the most upsetting train ride so far. Ma'am, this railroad does our best to keep all passengers comfortable. Can I get you a free drink from the hospitality car? Oh, that would be lovely. Oh, and while I'm there, here's a banana for that uh, monkey of yours. I'll go get your drink. I'm afraid we're nearly at the end of our show. Yes, and despite the uh, absence of any showbiz hams, I've, I hope you've enjoyed it. But before we go, we have one more treat for you. The Bisbon High School Gospel Choir is performing three popular songs for you tonight. Last year, they completed a successful tour to Belgium and are soon to start recording their third studio album, which will be available to download on music download sites. Their first two albums have sold as far away as New Zealand, Directed by Neil Oldham, Margaret Adorati, Sarah Bagot, and Richard Moore, please welcome our final act, the Bristol High, High School Gospel Choir.
all day. But during the interval, um, I had lots of ex clan members pecking my head. They said, it's going to be the last Bispham High School concert. Can we please come out with a choir to do the last number? So I said, I would ask you, and I would ask you if that was okay. So what do you think? Yeah. 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 If they break down in tears, it's all right, I'll film them. <laughs> so it doesn't make you Right, come on then. Come on. They're just going to dance. <laughs> so they'll just dance to us. Right. All right.
Right, wow, show Bispham, fantastic. Give him another round of applause, please. Every year I watch it, and every year I am just so amazed at the talent that we have at Bispham High School. You were great, guys, absolutely fantastic. Now, I hope you'll forgive me if I read the next part of what I'm going to say, because there are so many people to speak of, so many people to mention, and I don't want to miss anybody out. If I do, you can actually grab me later and uh, slap me. So, <laughs> Okay. Um, a production such as this is the perfect opportunity to showcase the singing, dancing, and acting talents of our students. So thank you to all our performers. Special thanks to our Year 11s, although they've left us, they've now come back to us and helped us out one more time. Show Bispam is us, right? We are a team. I'd like to thank all of you for your commitment. We've also had the commitment from past students who've come back to us tonight some of them left two, three years ago. One's on her way, as I think you heard before, to university. We'll miss you. <laughs> but maybe you'll find time to come back. Remember, those exams start earlier. So um, it's marvelous. The Marmosets have several of our former students in there. And so now, some of you off at Sixth Form College, and well, you're welcome back anytime, ladies. Um, Thank you to our students, past and present, for helping our production and helping it to be so special and so memorable. There are so many people to thank who have worked tirelessly to put this performance together. Our king and queen of the variety show are Richard Moore and Sarah Baygott. <laughs> And there's a special, um, it's been quite special for Sarah this term because she has become our head of music. So congratulations to Sarah. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want any of you to worry about um, Mr. Oldham because we've snaffled him and now he's with our senior management team. So congratulations there, Sarah. <laughs> Okay, Richard has produ co-produced the show and he's been the technical director. There he is, up in the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> he also does a marvellous job with the lighting and the sound. We couldn't do without him, could we? He's been responsible for the script and the film production and I think those people who were in it will realise what a hard taskmaster he is. Um, <laughs> always the one for the bon mot or even the bon note, yes. So we have um, the film production team um, also included Sarah Baygart, who, who co-produced, and Neil Oldham. Um, as musical directors, both of these people work really hard. Sarah was also responsible for the publicity, the program, and the photographs. We've got the band. One of our ex-students and two uh, very helpful. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got Dave Angel, Les Harrison, and our very own Danny Jones. So give them a round of applause. We've got all of the performing arts team, uh, Katie Eccles, Emma Moore, Neil Oldham, Margaret Ardoretti, and Mark Oliver. <laughs> They've done a fantastic job of putting this show together for all of us. And they've also helped with front of house. They've done everything, really.
Sarah Goff helped with the choreography. Um, and the massive thanks to Rachel Grove, who was our stage manager. Um, <laughs> Our tremendous backstage crew, Zoe Whitehead, uh, Kelsey Dennett, Rebecca Bevington, and Fraser Monday. <laughs> For assistance with all aspects of the production, we'd like to say thank you to our very own Trudy Lockhart as well and to Barbara Kasper, Kappa, who is uh, in our uh, teaching assistant ranks. We've got the front of house people, Sue Tymon, Jen Markham, Jodie Isherwood, Carl Breyer, and Leonie Stevenson. So thank you to all of those people. Mr. Richard Moore would like to thank his team of lighting operators, that's Callum Woolhouse, uh, Ben Lloyd and Harrison Lyon. <laughs> and many thanks to our ever-efficient student helpers, Natalie Markham, Eleanor Atkinson, Jack Murphy, Callum Molyneux, Wesley Smith, remember Wesley, number 13, Bryony Luxton and Ashley Leeming. <laughs> Thanks as ever to our unique, unique um, site staff, Mr. Kevin Dacre, Mr. Kenny Mackay, and Mr. Alan Poulter for all. <laughs> for all their invaluable help and continual support and have very helpful tips, if I might say so, too. The production cast are always mentioning those, so good. Um, we have thanks to the office staff and to the Bispam High School staff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then finally, thank you to a wonderful, wonderful audience containing so many of our friends, so many of our wonderful, wonderful parents, and I'm glad that you were all here to share this lovely evening with us. Thank you. Good night. We just have a few um, gifts we'd like to give out. Oh, this is for Sarah Baygott. Uh, Richard Moore, I don't know whether you're going to make your way down to us. <laughs> Whoa, yes. Go for it, sir. Neil Oldham. <laughs> Katie Eccles. I'll get, I'll get Emma Moore. Rachel Grove. Mark Oliver. Woo! 
Margaret Adoretti. three miss you have to pick up three sorry I haven't got enough hands um, so these are for our band members Les Harrison Dave Angel and Danny Jones right Barbara Kappa Trudy Lockhart, Jody Isherwood. Come on, ladies. Sue Timon and Jen Markham. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Richard Moore. Leonie Stevenson and Carl Breyer. I don't think they're here with us tonight. I think they've been on other performances. So if you can find the time, please fill out the questionnaires and put them in the box on your way out. Have a safe journey home. It's been lovely to meet you all again. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>